Now let's talk about maximizing fuel economy. I get emails fairly often from people who've bought a new car and they say that their fuel economy isn't quite living up to what they had hoped. Well, this Fiat 500, as an example right here, is rated for 34 miles per gallon on average by the EPA. And driving this on my daily commute, like a normal commuter, I get between 34 and 35 miles per gallon in this car. However, driving this car very carefully and very cautiously, I was able to get 50 miles per gallon on my way to work and about 45 on my return trip home, which is much better even than the EPA's high score on this car. Well that's obviously kind of an extreme example. There are things you can do with your own car to maximize your fuel economy on your commute. Make sure your engine is well maintained. Whether you maintain your engine yourself or whether you have someone else do it, a well maintained engine can improve fuel economy by 5 to 10 percent. You want to make sure that your fuel filters, your air filters, etc. are all nice and clean and that in general everything going on under the hood is exactly as it should be. Make sure your tires are properly inflated. An underinflated tire can decrease your fuel economy by around 5%. But don't overinflate your tires. I know that a lot of hypermilers like to do that, but there's a reason that tires have a recommended tire pressure. You'll find that tire pressure information in several places. It's usually either on the driver's door, on the driver's door sill, on the fuel filler door, or sometimes even in the center console of a car. You don't want to overinflate your tire because if you take a look at this tire right here on the back of this Fiat 500, it is virtually flat across the bottom of the tire. If you overinflate the tire, it will turn out more like a bicycle tire. It will start to bulge out right in the middle and it'll get very uneven wear on your tire, and you'll also greatly reduce the handling ability on your car. The reason that overinflating your tire helps improve fuel economy is because you're getting less tire on the road and therefore less friction, except that less tire on the road and less friction also means poor handling, poor acceleration, as well as poor stopping times. If you're after fuel economy, don't do what I did. Don't put aftermarket wheels and tires that are larger than your stock wheel and tire sizes on your car. They will reduce fuel economy. This wheel and tire combo on this Jeep Grand Cherokee reduced my fuel economy by 22% on average based on my driving style. That's a huge difference over the stock wheels and tires. Ultra grippy summer tires are an awful lot of fun like these tires right here on my Jag. Unfortunately, they will reduce your fuel economy if your car didn't come with this kind of tire from the factory. So if your car came with ultra low rolling resistance tires, especially from the factory, and you move to something like a summer tire, then you can expect up to about a 5% decrease in your fuel economy. So don't put ultra grippy summer rubber on your Prius and then start asking why your fuel economy dropped. Even though I hated the 55 mile an hour national speed limit, there really is solid logic behind it. Using 55 miles an hour as a baseline for fuel economy in this Fiat 500 right here that we're testing, Going 60 miles an hour will reduce your fuel economy by 3%. Going 65 miles an hour cuts it down by 8%. Getting 70 miles an hour cuts that fuel economy by 17%. At 75 miles an hour, our fuel economy was cut by a full 25%. And by the time we hit 80 miles an hour, we were getting 30% lower fuel economy than I was at 55 miles an hour in that Fiat 500. And that's pretty true for just about any vehicle out there because as you get faster, the effect of wind resistance really has a much bigger impact on the fuel economy of a vehicle. The bigger and squarer your vehicle is, the bigger that impact will be as you go faster. There are a lot of things we can do out on the road as well, things that we've known about for ages, like driving more smoothly, not doing jackrabbit starts or abrupt stops, things like that. Those will improve your fuel economy. Of course, turning off your air conditioning if you're in stop and go traffic or in slow traffic, that will always improve your fuel economy. However, as I'm getting on the freeway right now, we really want to turn that air conditioning back on rather than opening a window because it's going to be more efficient to run the air conditioning than to have your windows open. Wind resistance is a big factor when it comes to fuel economy as well. Remember to use the car's cruise control as much as possible. The car is going to do a much better job at making smooth adjustments to the throttle rather than your right foot. The smoother the adjustments to the throttle, the better fuel economy you're going to get. Also, when you're going down an incline like we're going down right now, leave the car in gear. Don't put the car in neutral. That applies to both manual and automatic transmission vehicles. Because when you're going downhill and basically the hill is causing the engine to spin, we can also call that engine braking, the car is using essentially no gasoline. This applies to most modern vehicles. Now, back in the days of the carburetor or old, you know, first generation uh, fuel injection systems, that didn't always apply. And you would be using more gasoline than if you put it in neutral and let the car idle down the hill. But it's just not true anymore. If you're in a modern car, leave the car in gear. Uh, the engine braking will help slow you down. It will help reduce wear on the brake pads, but it will also use less fuel. Even though this Fiat 500 Pops EPA fuel economy average is 34 miles per gallon in combined driving, Following all those rules and driving it very conservatively on the freeway at around 60 miles an hour on my way to work, I averaged 50.1 miles per gallon on my way to work 
and even coming home involving this 2200 foot mountain pass that I'm just cresting over right now, my average has been 42.9 miles per gallon, which is even better than the Fiat 500's 40 mile per gallon highway score in the EPA 2008 tests. The reason for that is the EPA 2008 tests involves air conditioning on and high travel speeds. So if you don't use the air conditioning like I haven't been today and you travel more slowly than normal, you're going to get much better fuel economy. We also have to keep the math in mind because this Saab 97 Aero averages about 15 miles per gallon. If you don't drive this gently, you can reduce your fuel economy by 20%, just like in any car. But that 20% difference in fuel economy is only going to take you down to about 12 and a half miles per gallon. It's not going to seem that obvious, even though it's going to cost you a decent amount of money. However, a 20% reduction in this Fiat 500's fuel economy will reduce your fuel economy by about 7 miles per gallon, and that's going to take you out of the 30s and down into the high 20s, and you're really going to start noticing that. If you expand this out further and you take a look at something like a Honda Accord Hybrid or a Toyota Prius, which get 50 miles per gallon, a 20% difference in fuel economy is a full 10 miles per gallon difference in those cars. And again, the driver can cause a 20% difference in fuel economy just by the way that you drive. Weight is a definite enemy of fuel economy. If you've ever wondered if my fuel economy numbers are more realistic, I assure you that I do carry around a decent amount of crap every day in my car. This trunk is full of stuff in the Fiat 500. And of course, everything adds up. The better maintained your engine is, the better your tires are inflated, the less weight you're carrying around in your car, and the more careful that you drive, the better your fuel economy will be, whether it's in a brand new Fiat 500 like this, or whether it's the old car that you already own. Thanks for taking the time to watch this video. Again, I'm Alex Dykes, and this has been the Alex on Answers segment on Alex on Autos. Go ahead and click that subscribe banner at the bottom of your screen so you can be updated on all of our latest videos, including the full review of this Fiat 500 coming up very soon. You can also find me over at Facebook at facebook.com slash alexonautos. And if you have any automotive questions, you can always email me at alex at alexonautos.com.